Welcome to Illuminati Silver's Inner Sanctum, where we tell you the truth about silver, precious metals, economics and politics. Today is Sunday the 3rd of March 2019, and we are addressing the question, does China pose an international cyber security threat? In this video, we shall read an article written recently in the Times newspaper and how the British intelligence services are reacting to Chinese tech firms taking over its 5G mobile networks and how they foresee this as posing a threat to national security. For those who do not live in the United Kingdom just to paint a brief picture, we mentioned three intelligence agencies, GCHQ, MI5 and MI6. GCHQ specialises in gaining intelligence from communications. MI5 and MI6 both deal with human intelligence. MI5 focuses their efforts within the UK and MI6 focuses on gathering intelligence outside the UK. So to some extent, MI6 is very similar to the CIA, and MI5 is, is a mix between partial FBI and partial NSA. With that, we shall now go ahead and read the article. The article is published in the Monday 25th of Feb edition of The Times. It's written by John Reynolds and entitled Chinese Tech Firms A Threat to Security Warns GCHQ Chief Quote, National security could be threatened if Chinese technology companies become involved in Britain's telecoms network, the head of GCHQ has warned. In a rare public speech, Jeremy Fleming who was appointed last year, said that the drive by the Chinese companies to become involved in Western telecom sector represented a hugely co complex technological challenge. He also emphasised the importance of Britain possessing the offensive capability to project cyber power to deny, disrupt or degrade in the event of hostile action. His comments came after Alex Younger, the chief of MI6, the equivalent of the US CIA, last year expressed concern at the potential involvement of Huawei in Britain's 5G mobile network. Several governments have cited security concerns and blocked companies from using Huawei's technology in 5G mobile networks. In his address to government, military and industrial figures from Southeast Asia, Mr Fleming, who was previously MI5's deputy director, which is more or less equivalent to the FBI, said it was essential that the risks of allowing Chinese companies to become involved were understood. He said, quote, we have to understand the opportunities and threats from China's technological offer. It's a hugely complex strategic challenge which will span the next few decades. How we deal with it will be crucial for prosperity and security way beyond 5G contracts. Unquote. He emphasised the need for stronger cyber security across the telecom sector in a market that does not incentivise good cyber security practices. Vulnerabilities can and will be exploited, but networks should be designed in a way that cauterizes the damage, he said. With about half of the 1,100 incidents handled by the UK National Cyber Security Centre over the past two years involving state actors, Mr Fleming said there was a need for an internationally agreed system of ethics and standards for operating in cyberspace. Quote, some of the behaviour we've seen from certain states or criminals is clearly wrong in any circumstance. An attack on a hospital's IT, 
or on a country's electoral system will always require sanction, unquote, he said. Unchecked, we're heading for an even less governed space where rights and wrongs are not automatically recognised and where acceptable behaviours are not a given. He added that Britain needed to ensure that programmes such as the NCSC's Active Cyber Defence Programme were implemented at a scale that made a truly national and potentially internationally transformative difference. The ability to be able to use cyber tools to disrupt, deny or degrade is the most contentious and least well understood aspect of cyber power, he said. But in the right context, governed by appropriate international and domestic laws, offensive cyber is an essential part of a nation's cyber toolkit. He added that ultimately, Britain's national security in cyberspace would depend on its ability to act in concert with international allies. Our future security will be guaranteed not by the quality of our coding, the design of our silicon, or the cunning of our cyber operators, but by the bonds that tie us together and the relationships that give us confidence to act decisively against common threats, he said. End of article. So, we are here faced with concerns expressed by three of the most important intelligence agencies within the United Kingdom of allowing Huawei, a Chinese company, from either taking over or having a majority stake in our 5G mobile network. The fear is equally expressed by other countries. An article published on the website bankinfosecurity.com back in November 2018. It's entitled Chinese Cyber Threat. NSA confirms that attacks have escalated. We'll quote a little from this article. The historic cybersecurity non-aggression pact agreed between China and the United States in 2015 seems to have gone out of the window said cybersecurity expert speaking Thursday at the Aspen Cyber Summit in San Francisco. Three years ago, the White House threatened to impose sanctions on China unless it ceased its cyber-enabled economic espionage program against the United States. Then cybersecurity researchers initially tracked a marked decrease in attacks sanctioned by the Beijing government as well as by Chinese individuals. But with President Donald Trump changing tack, a trade war between the US and China has arisen. While the US hasn't imposed sanctions on China, it has slapped increased tariffs on Chinese imports into the United States. And that has resulted in an increase in hack attacks emanating from China, despite the 2015 agreement. Quote, It's clear that they are well beyond the bounds today of the agreement, unquote. Rob Joyce, the National Security Agency's Senior Advisor for Cybersecurity Strategy to the Director, said at the Aspen Cyber Summit, quote, We have certainly seen their behaviour erode in the last year, and we're very concerned with those troubling trends, unquote, said Joyce, who formerly served as the White House Cybersecurity Coordinator. Dmitry Alperovich, CTO of cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, told summit attendees that the thinking by China's leadership appears to be, quote, if we're going to suffer the economic pain, why not get the benefit from espionage, unquote. But he said that while cyber espionage is one component of the Chinese government's strategy, it's not the complete picture. Quote, it is an economic warfare problem that is being conducted through cyber, as well as other means, and responding to this with economic sanctions of our own and putting pressure on the Chinese government, I think, is the right strategy. It will take a long time. We are not going to see results immediately, but I think the strategy is square. Unquote. The tariff pressure on China does seem to be working. Alperovich added, quote, For the first time in President Xi's term, we're starting to see fissures 
within the Politburo and some criticism of his governance given the relationship with the United States, unquote, he said. Beyond economic pressure, the US government is also bringing other diplomatic forms of pressure to bear, including the threat of sanctions. Quote, We recognise it's not just a cyber problem, Joyce said. We're using all elements of national power to address these, unquote. That includes indicting foreign hackers. For example, last month, the Chinese Ministry of State Security operative was arrested in Belgium and extradited to the US after he was indicted by a federal grand jury for conspiring and attempting to commit economic espionage and steal trade secrets from US organisations. End of article. So what are we meant to extract from all of this? Well, firstly, it's not revolutionary to be told that foreign state actors are actually spying on us or, in some cases, attempting to sabotage us, either for acts of revenge or to gain a competitive economic advantage. The reason we're covering this topic is essentially twofold. The first, that our economic and financial systems can indeed be manipulated by foreign enemies or arguably foreign friends which therefore undermines the confidence in those systems, which will lead to a lack of confidence in our currency, and we're assuming here it's primarily digital at this stage. And therefore one needs a form of protection against that from occurring. Now, of course, the various cyber institutes will say, well, the protection will be certain firewalls and emergency procedures and so on and so forth. And of course, that makes sense. But what can you and we do at our level to ensure a degree of protection? And the obvious answer to that is to at least have access to physical precious metals in the case of such an emergency. The second reason we're covering this is also because these cyber attacks can actually result in retaliatory action, which may be militarily or economically. And it would not be difficult for one state actor to actually infiltrate our security systems, but make it appear that it is another state actor that is actually conducting this with a view to a potential economic or physical war breaking out between those two nations. And just imagine when that happens, what effect that will have, A, on stock markets generally, which would be devastating, and B, on the price of physical precious metals, which would be positive. So something which at first appears innocuous as a Chinese tech firm attempting to acquire a country's 5G network, or be the major player in that network, can actually lead to foreign subversive acts against the country that has given away its network. How likely is this to happen is anyone's guess. But as the world becomes more digitised and computers essentially controlling the operations, then we can expect more of these cyber attacks and we can expect more countries attempting to gain ownership of data mobile satellite networks. If ever there was a time that one needed to protect oneself against such things, at least economically, then to some degree, and we don't overemphasize this, but to some degree, the ownership of physical precious metals will give us some comfort in the event that such a financial system does in fact break down, even if it's only a temporary stall until those networks are brought back up again. So, we're asking Do you believe China poses a serious threat to international security 
And if you were the government, would you allow your data network, satellite network, broadband network, to be run or controlled, albeit under licence, by a foreign company? We'd appreciate your views. Disclaimer. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.